um, <laughs> considering how much I haven't done with my life. Really? No, I'm seriously impressed. Um, I think I've met one other Olympian, and I think he might be, no, it's Cameron. Out of four pillars, Cameron was a sprinter, and he was at um, the Olympics down in Texas or wherever it is. Uh, Mexico City. No, not Mexico. No, he's not that old. No. Cameron's, Cameron's younger than I am. <laughs> um, that was Tulsa or something like that. He went uh, well, with the head of bomb blast, and it was one of the Southern American states. Mm. Forgive me, since I had we had COVID, um, my my my, my memory just gone. That's it. Thank you very much. You think you're going to try to do something? I can't can't recall. Yeah. Yeah. But Cameron was, I think, the sprinter. Was a sprinter. Yeah. Okay. So you're my you're my second high profile person because I'm not sporty. I well, my eldest runs. My eldest yeah. is a soccer nut, and they call him the gazelle. It's my, where, I'm, where I'm encouraging him, I call him Gonzalez. And this guy yesterday was at a soccer match, was looking for the Mexican kid on the field. They go. Um, <laughs> There's no Mexican kid on the field. He goes, why? I said, I'm calling out to my son. He goes, why? He goes, Speedy Gonzalez. He's, he's quick, yeah. And he's the fastest mouse in all Mexico. Yeah. And I go, oh, okay. Because, yeah, yeah, number 17. <laughs> he really is very fast. You need to be, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, I I'd, I'd, yeah, don't really drag those kind of stories out too often. Oh, um, I would. I keep them under wraps a little bit. But uh, my, my, it's not my nature to be, you know, out in the spotlight like that so um yeah i i yeah tend to tend not to talk about it too much but a great period in my life and can't complain with the all the places i went and all the things i saw and over sort of probably five or six years did a lot more traveling than most sort of mm-hmm. 18, 19 20 year olds get to do and it's yeah. like more traveling than i did at that age oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but we once we moved up to Shepparton, um, so that was in about two thousand and three or so, two thousand four, and and yeah, tree changed. But you know, I would have been twenty twenty three at the time, twenty two, twenty three, something like that. So um, yeah, so we've been up here ever since, basically. See, at nineteen, I did the reverse. I came from North Queensland to Melbourne. Yeah, I had my heart broken in, in Mackay, and then. Got the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> <clears throat> Went to Melbourne for a month to cover the heart heartbreak, and um, what is it now? Just stayed there. Yeah, thirty eight years and two marriages later. Because yeah. um, are you going to move back? It's because uh, no. no, I'm allergic to um cane toads. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm allergic to traffic and congestion, so hence the living up here. Yeah, a, a, we we did travel back to Melbourne quite a bit when we were when we first moved up here, but it just it became very apparent the discrepancy between you know life in Melbourne and life up here um, the change of pace and it, it, it becomes very easy to get frustrated when you have to go back to any sort of you know people and traffic and that sort of stuff it's uh, my tolerance for it and my tolerance has gotten less over time with you know working in IT and troubleshooting stuff for people for you know and and seeing the sometimes the level of you know, feedback that you get and help that you get from people when you're trying to fix problems for them is pretty low um, and the frustration levels get, you know, out of control very easily and it, it was kind of at that point that I decided really that I, I needed to do something different with my life and I had been, you know, hobby distilling for, for a oh, while. He's the lead in people, the lead in the boy home brewed. And I imagine made, made, I've made a lot of stuff for, for a long time. I, I think I actually started with my mum because my mum's off, off a farm down near Warrnambool mm-hmm. and they were always very self-sufficient. And, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, all the things that they used to do to preserve food and all this sort of stuff. And, and mum started talking about making ginger beer. And so I probably would have been seven or eight at the time, I reckon. And we, we started making ginger beer at home and, you know, we had a, a house in Melbourne that was, you know, probably a metre and a half off the ground on a sloping block. So um, we had a nice, a nice, you know, sort cellar. of cool cellar sort of area, and we 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 make ginger beer, and um, that was that was probably my first first inkling. Oh, maybe not first inkling, but that that was probably um, I'd always been very hands on as a kid, so that creative type stuff was was what I liked to to be involved with and um, 
that didn't change over the years. So, you know, we made ginger beer and then we were old enough, we started making beer at home. And then, you know, when I moved out out of the countryside and um, started tinkering with other stuff and yeah, so that's, that progression has always been been there in the background, I suppose. And then, yeah, starting to think about what to do for, for, for another, another career, essentially at 45, you know, what am I gonna do? Because I said to my wife, I've had enough of doing the IT. I want to get rid of the business, and and I just can't. I'm gonna have a mental breakdown if I keep doing it any longer. Um, and she said, Well, you need to find something else to do before you offload the business. And I'm like, Right. So you kept you got tired of getting the wrong answer to the question of how fucking stupid can you? Uh, I no, not really. It's more the it, how how deep to get into it. Um, I, 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 when, I've got a when I, business. I, I know how dumb people can get. I, I got it. Really, it really got me at the point where I'm talking to somebody on the phone, and these people are, you know, sitting at an office desk using a computer every day, and and you're saying, "Can you open up a web browser?" And the response is, "What's that?" We established that you got to the point where you wanted to start hitting people with computers in your IT. You were already doing homebrew and you were in a major fruit growing region. And for those of you who do not live in Melbourne or Victoria, um, we're just, just outside the major regional town of Shepparton and it's SBC, Shepparton Preserving Companies up here. Yep. It's a major stone fruit, peaches, pears. There's grapes up here as well. Grapes, apples, yeah, bit of citrus. So yeah, the whole lot. Yeah, you it's a everything. major fruit growing yeah. region and you decided because there's just so much waste fruit around and to basically use the fruit based alcohol in your in your gins, yes? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So we we've done some experimenting with a lot of different things over over a long period of time with uh, distilling and we've made some plum out of it, which I was blown away with and in the back of my mind was always that I wanted to make make gin with it, um, mm-hmm. just because of the the the, the texture, the flavours, the the mouth feel. Um, there's there's a, a lot going for it, and mm-hmm. um, it's a it's it's a highly esterified um, spirit. So, so O to V, but not super bits. No, so we we distill. So if you make sliver bits, generally mm-hmm. speaking, in, in accepted practice, sliver bits is distilled like a, like a brandy or a, um, or, or a whiskey for that matter as well. Like, so in, in the US, they have to, they have to distill, distill their whiskey at, at no better than 80% ABV and there's, there's restrictions around, around how you can distill that. So mm-hmm. what we've done is we distill the plum O to V out at a higher proof than what you would do if you were going to make the sliver of it. So we're trying to get, carry some of the flavours and the characteristics through, but not all the flavour and characteristics. So we're not naive enough to think that you could probably make a gin out of a full strength, like a full flavoured um, you know, sliver of it. It is too much, too much plum in it. Mm-hmm. So... Um, so what we've done is try to try to take it to a point where where that fruitiness is there, and it works like another botanical in the in the gin. So um, it it adds to the flavours; it doesn't detract from the flavours. It and then over time, the the way that, that spirit um, it, it's almost like an aging process in the bottle. So our spirit changes and gets fuller in flavour. The the, the flavours intensify in the bottle. Um, over time is what we found so um, yeah it's it it's just something very different yeah but well, you actually the whole idea of an eating apple actually comes about because of the American temperance movement so the, the whole temperance movement of you know booze equals fun type brigade you know the no fun brigade they promoted eating apples because prior to late well mid to late 19th century apples were, were there for what you made cider out of yeah what's the movie itself no one actually ate apples. So the temperance, you know, where Bible basers were going to take the fun out of life type brigade, started promoting the idea that apples should actually be eaten rather than drunk. Okay. So, so that's a fun little fact for um, those of you who don't know. Um, the No Fun Brigade yep. um, invented the eating apple. Yeah, right. I'm actually the um, grandson of a Seventh-day Adventist missionary. 
and in terms of fruit, the apple really had, I don't think it's fallen far from the tree, I think it's fallen out of the complete orchard. Um, I'm about as far away from my, vision, from my um, temperate seven, seven day Adventist as you can physically get, because the humming in the background sound is um, my grandmother basically spinning in her grave at, at what I drink <laughs> on average week. So you've got the fruit base, and then you diversify your signature spirit which I must confess, Sam contacted me about six or so months ago, sent me a simple pack, and I can tell you now that doing the write-up notes on your sample pack was challenging because I did them all at once. Big mistake. So by the time I got to the last one, I was three quarters cut. <laughs> so here I am taking this, this gene three different ways, and the um, let's just say the, the spelling was getting rather creative at the end of the um, evening. <laughs> the I, I, interesting notes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I poured into poured myself into bed about eleven o'clock, and my darling wife looked at me and made the most remarkable observation of her entire life. She looked at me and she went, "You're drunk." In case of, shh, be working. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah, note yourself. Do not do the, cause do not do three or four um, genes three or four different break ways. It, break it down into over a few days. Yeah, a good idea. Yeah. Not do it all at yeah. once. But otherwise, at the end of it, yeah. it's case I have no idea what I'm writing. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it can get that way uh, very quickly. Yeah. 